Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I got a cute little thing that I want to share with you guys and a few hacks as well towards the end. So stick with me in the video. It's only about just under 20 minutes, but this wound up being a super cute art journal page and could also be the cutest card ever. So um, where it began was I have the, a, I just made a new mini art journal and art journaling, the key to art journaling, especially if you're new to it, start small guys, just start small. And uh, you, you won't get discouraged by it. Um, and especially if you have a smaller stash of things. So um, I made that with the uh, Caitlin Lazardi uh, Sizzix Biggs die. Um, really cool die. And it helps get that cover made for you. And gives you all the instructions on how to make that. And then I also got the insert there with all the dies that go with it. And uh, I've just got my notes in there. Because I like to make my um, paper inserts a little bit different. Um, but that's a really cute set um, to make, especially for somebody who's new to art journaling. Look at the size of that. It's not intimidating at all. So you can add pockets again. That's with the die, which I did. I added some pockets. I also laminated it so I didn't need to worry about it being on my art surf on my um, uh, surface because everything wipes off the laminate. But the inserts, the thing I love about it is that you just pull them right out. And you don't have to work in the whole book. You just work on that one sheet of paper. Now I can do a double layout if I want. Um, for this one, I, I chose not to. And it's because this started as a card. That is the double stitched cloud die from Honey Bee, which I, Honeybee, which I absolutely love. I've had that in my stash for a while. And these stamps from Penny Black are new to me. They're hedgy friends. I bought them on Amazon. They're super cute. I can't get enough of these little cute little fatties. I love them. I was coloring them. It was great medicine. That's what I needed. So all of that stuff was already created for me. And when I started making all these um, little additions here that you can see on my on my workstation, um, I I was thinking of a card. And there's my card layout. And it's as you can see, most you know the clouds. I cut it down to go on a standard card. And how cute is that, right? Super cute. And I could make a card, and then I thought, I really want to start my new art journal. And I think it would be a great idea, because oftentimes I try cards and then I fail at them. And I'm like, oh, that looks like that would be super cute. And I'm like, nah, I really didn't. And and then maybe I want to remember the layout of the card. You know, maybe it's a carrot card that I gave away. So I decided that I would do um, a dry run card art journal. <laughs> it's just an idea I came up with. I was like, well let's go ahead and just keep a record of the ones that I do that I, that are either, you know, they're, they're a win or a fail. It doesn't matter. It's still art that I made and I can keep it in my art journal. And with each insert in my new journal, it'll just be a dry run for cards. So that's what I decided. That's what I'm going to do. So my first insert is about eight pages. It's going to be a dry run for cards or um, card technique playing. You know, where you're like, gosh, I don't know if this blend of colors will work. Well, put it in the art journal and you can write on it and say, hey, by the way, don't mix this because you make brown. Most of us know you can use a color wheel and you know. Um, but you know what? I'm a professional mud maker. <laughs> I make mud all the time with my inks. So doing a test run, it just makes sense. So that's what I'm going to do with my art journal. And the, the layout is so simple. I just used my pencil and drew a line and cut it out with my scissors to make that little green mountain or green hill. Um, and then I inked it with my Distress Oxide Mode Lawn ink. And um, I'll just cut it to size, whatever I want it to be. And then I wanted to tone down the white in the background, so I used Speckled Egg to do that. Love that color. Absolutely love that color. You can't see it in here. It's very, very subtle. But it did the trick. And then I'll just trim it all out. And then this black thing on my desk is just a silicone hot pad that you can get from any store. They're usually sitting on the ends of the um, aisles. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them everywhere. And uh, it's the, the reason why I bought this one initially was for my glue gun. And it works great for that because the glue goes into the little honeycomb pieces that are on that. Hopefully you can see that. It looks like a honeycomb. I've stamped with that before. You can do so much stuff with that. But my best use for this is, for right now anyway, is holding my scissors on my glass mat and my dies. Um, and obviously my ink pads, they stay put on there. So 
The reason why I decided to bring this out, don't know why I didn't think about it before, is because I've seen on Simon Says they have this little paw print. It's so cute. And it's a little ink holder. Super cute what they have. And I was like, hey, I've already got something like that. So I probably, I think I did buy the Simon Says one, though. <laughs> I probably did. It's it, I got a shipment coming from them here pretty soon. But, um, yeah, you can just buy these cool mats. And uh, you can, so many uses for it. Again, like I said, you can stamp with it. You can, you know, uh, protect your hands from hot stuff. I mean, use your glue gun on it. And, I, you know, I, I bust out these big scissors all the time. And sometimes I put them on my glass mat and it's, I put them down pretty hard. And uh, I'm afraid I'm going to crack it. So I'm getting in the habit of bringing that out and putting heavy things and ink pads on there. Um, and I'm getting a lot of use out of that. So that's, I guess we can call that a hack because that might save you some money to buy just the generic ones. And where, where am I here? Oh, pop dots. So I've had these pop dot square things in my stash for a really, really long time. And I spared you the fussing with those because they, they're all over the place. And then the little tiny little papers, I spared you all that. But I wanted to use them up. I've had them in my stash for a long time. And they're they're a pretty deep uh, dimension. So they work out pretty well. It's a little too high for my liking. That's why I don't use them as much. I like a little bit. I like some dimension, but these give a little more than what I like. Um, but for this card, it worked because I had dimension in the clouds too. So it makes things look a little, I don't know, 3D-ish. And then those cute little dewdrops I just got from um, Amazon and uh, really, really affordable. There's quite a few in there and I just put them in this little container and um, they're full of static too. So they keep sticking to me. So I fussed with those for a while and I sped up the majority of the video where I was fussing with them. And um, my little gem picker upper thing, my gem picker, it's, it just doesn't work as well as I'd like it to. <laughs> But, it, again, it's probably operator error. But the stickiness, it sticks to it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but, the, yeah, it's it's frustrating <laughs> to mess with those, those little things. But they are cute. They are super cute. And the, the end result is worth the fussing. So I just wound up putting little d drops of glue wherever I wanted to add one of those little dew drops. It gives just the right amount of sparkle, and they do have quite a bit of dimension. You'd be really surprised. Um, hopefully, the pictures do it justice where you can really see um, it, it's, it's a significant amount of uh, dimension on there. So, And that pack that I got from Amazon, it comes in multiple sizes. So it's one pack, and you get like three different sizes in there. I thought it was a really good value. I can find the link or remember I can share that with you guys but if you go on Amazon and you just search dewdrops you'll find it so it's not hard to find but yeah I put quite I went a little crazy so and and if they were in a teardrop um a teardrop shake that would have been a little bit better but I don't care it still looks super cute I got stamps with water drops, but the scale of it was too big for this. But I definitely thought of that. The stamps that I have by Designs by Rin. Oh my gosh, she's so talented. I used to be a designer for her. So, um, yeah, I just put those on there. Super cute. And then a sentiment. I got to come up with something. And good thing because the stamp set has something in there. It says, enjoy the little things. And that's really the only stamp that's in there. And how perfect was that? It worked out great. But because it's an art journal, I decided I'm going to do what I always do. And I'm going to ink up the edges. And in hindsight, I wish I would have just left well enough alone. Um, but I was in art, art journal mode, so it happened. <laughs> so I pulled out the pumice uh, stone ink. Uh, oxide ink and I tried that on there and it just wasn't significant enough but you know in again in hindsight it should have been just fine if I was going to ink up anything it should have been that and just that amount but I didn't got a little crazy got a little crazy but I was just testing it out so and then I cut myself on that um velcro it's really really sharp it made me bleed <laughs> 
So, um, but you know, I'm an art warrior. I just keep going with my little poked hole in my thumb. <laughs> it's fine. It didn't hurt. But I'm trying it out. I'm going, huh, how dark is this going to be? Because it doesn't look like it's going to be significant enough. On the white paper, it looked good. But I got I got a lot going on on this art, on this page. So if I add this, it's it, it, it didn't have an impact at all. So, and again, I shouldn't have even done it at all. So I went to my all-time favorite vintage photo, just like I always do. Um, but again, in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have done it. But it's not bad. It's not bad. For an art journal page, it's exactly what I always do. So, and I usually really, really like it. But looking at this, I'm like, well, if I chose to darken it up, I actually just should have gone with black soot. That probably would have served me even better. But, but you know. So that ink pad um, or that silicone pad works great. I'm a little wobbly on there. And the reason for that is because I have a, a domed foam on the back for that on the Velcro. So it's domed, so obviously it doesn't sit flat, but that doesn't bother me at all because at least it helps, helps me to keep my foam pads exactly where they need to be, and that's with the ink pad that they were used for. So I was trying to be subtle, and because the, uh, the clouds are all separate pieces, they're not, you know, one thing. At the end, they do look cohesive as one. However, when I was inking it, as I knew what happened, you know, you kind of get a little stuck underneath the the edges there of the clouds but that's okay you just work around it make it happen but that cloud die is super cute the fact that it has the double stitching on it is really really cute so you can even use the positive or the negative on it you can make stencils out of it um it's awesome but the cloud stencils that i have i also love those but i i opted to do a die cut um for more dimension and i think that was the right choice especially for a card so I really love my dry run here. So I will be making a card with this same type of design. But think about making your own art journal, your own small art journal, and using it for your dry runs for card making or whatever you, whatever kind of maker you are, make whatever. You can have some place to even record your, your failures and your successes, um, like I was saying earlier. So think about doing that. That's another kind of, I, I, I'm going to call it a hack and go, hey, this is, this is a great, or just call it an idea. And I think, personally, I think it's a great one because you can have a dry run on it. And you can stop at any point, you know, because I know a lot of designers that they sit there and they create their cards and then they create and they're like, okay, yeah, I like these. Now they have to go and do a video and recreate the same thing again. Um, or maybe you create something that um, you really loved and it was a gift and you gave it away. And now you're like, what was that? What did I do? And you don't remember? If you do your first dry run and you have it in your art journal, you can go, oh, let me go back and look at that. Also, when you get kind of out of your, you need some mojo, right? Some crafting mojo. When you get in a zone and you just feel like you can't create anything, um, looking back at that stuff might really help you to get inspired for trying new techniques or to go, oh, I really loved it. That was really relaxing when I did that or whatever, whatever your jam is. Um, you can look back on it and go, oh, that's right. I, I, now I know how I did that. I'm going to do that again. Or I'm going to tweak it, you know. So, because we change our minds all the time. So, I stamped that cute little sentiment. Enjoy the little things that came in that Hedgy Friends uh, stamp set. And it's by, again, it's by Penny, Penny Black. I just stamped it. I could have embossed it. I opted out. There was a lot of shiny stuff on here. The sentiment is not the focal point on this. It's just a side note. And then, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm just putting my stamp back. But what I do, I wish I would have had a better angle on this to kind of show you guys. Now, Simon Hurley um, and Kathy Zilski, they kind of collaborated a while ago. I love them both. Just just absolutely love them both. Um, Kathy cracks me up in her, in her, you know, craft room slash dining room. She's hilarious. And Simon is just the cutest thing ever. How do you not, how do you not love those two? But um, they had a hack that I've, so, I was like, how did I not know this? But you know what? You don't know what you don't know, guys. It didn't make me stupid. It just means I just didn't. I just didn't know. So my guillotine uh, cutter, um, where you line it up on the little plastic thing that looks like two little mountains, um, where you line it up up to the blade is how no matter what piece of paper you have, it doesn't have to have a straight edge. 
It's how to get your sentiment straight every time. If I can find a link to that video, I'll try to make sure I get it uh, in here. But it's it was the life-changing hack for me for when I make sentiments. Now mine are all straight and there's no fuss. And it's because I finally use my tools the right way. As I always say, it's always operator error. You know, these designers and, and they make and they make great products and we just we just gotta use them right. But I wish I had a better angle angle and, and zoomed in so you could see. Um, you just line it up and that guillotine thing helps me make it perfect every time. So that was a hack that I got from again Simon Hurley and Kathy Zilski. So um and I didn't show it, but you just line it up and get as close to the thing as possible. Make sure you use the grid lines to keep your keep your sentiments straight. And then the cutting around it winds up being on point every time. So I love that. So a little vintage photo magic on that sentiment. And then I wind up just instead of uh, matting that, I decided that I would just pop it up. I had all these extra strips of white cardstock sitting around. And that is a hack that I got from Jennifer McGuire, who is another amazing designer. She shares all of her techniques and, and she does so many different things on YouTube. Um, so again, if you search up Jennifer McGuire, you can find her. And she just uses the little strips or extra strips of scrap paper. And you just glue it one on top of the one on top of the next until you get the dimension that you want. I think I did five or six on this one. And there's no, you know, no one inside you do however, you know, however you much you want. And I was like, well, I want a little more. So I kept cutting pieces. And that one wound up being a little bit too big. So no big deal. You trim it down. There's no perfect way of doing this. No one's going to see it anyway. You're going to glue it down. It's going to be underneath the sentiment. So this way I don't have to use foam tape, which I'm running very low on. If you can imagine that, I am very running very low on that. But when you glue a bunch of pieces, piece of paper together and you put it on the back of some, it, it adds some girth to it. It makes it look significant and it's really not. It's, it makes it look like its own embellishment, like a store-bought one or one that was made by a designer and you're just in your craft room just doing your thing. So it's pretty cool. Simple, simple thing to do. That It saves you money because everybody's got paper. And the foam tape, you can... You can Shell, shell out a good amount. I've seen people with these massive rolls. I don't know what I would do with that. <laughs> Where would I store it? I'm I'm a sucker for buying the smaller ones just so they'll fit in my drawer. So that might not be the best way, but I don't have a whole lot of storage. So there it is. You can't see in the camera, but it does have some good significant um, dimension to it. So I'm trying to put it down by my little hedgy thing and he is popped up with pop dots or pop squares. So it doesn't fit, but I was like, oh, it'd be so cute right down there. But I want to just put it up in the clouds and no big deal. If I make a card, I'll probably put it maybe right next to him where I initially placed it or underneath the little puddle. But this is the, this is the dry run. So there it is. Super cute. That it turned out really nice. And again, the coloring on that was super simple. There's not a lot of shading, as you can see. I just used uh, Distress Ink and made his little cheeks pink. And the umbrella is just orange. No, no significant shading or anything because it just didn't need it. He's just so cute. You could just simply, just very simple coloring on that. So um, here's a hack for you guys for tape. Um, this is an artist tape. When you tear the tape, Tear it up a little bit from the roll and then fold, fold the end back on itself so you have a little tab to pull so you don't fight to restart the tape on the next time that you need it. So fold that little tab and it creates a little handle for pulling the tape and we get into a habit of doing that every time. And then you don't have to fuss through trying to find where's this tape start and then peeling it up and then having it peel back wrong. And So I kind of cut that hinge a little too close when I trimmed it. No big deal. I fixed it right there. So there's page one of my new little mini art journal. I hope you guys like it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that bell to get notified anytime I do a video. Subscribe, comment. I love to read your comment. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.